pleasure to see you again and discuss uh, gold. You're great at playing those fascinating and flawed characters. Does it always come from someone inspiring you? Uh, eventually it does. Um, this, is, this one in particular is one that I read and I was like, oh, I have to do that. There's nobody else that can do that. I know this guy from the inside out. That doesn't always happen. Hopefully it happens somewhere in the process of getting ready, but with this character, it was one read, and I knew that. Um, I grew up around a bunch of Kenny Wellses. Mm -hmm. My dad dealt with a bunch of Kenny Wells. My dad had some Kenny Wells in him. I was privy and got to witness a lot of dealings that my dad did with people that were, lit, were the Kenny Wellses of the world. Um, consumers of life, survivors, people who were not making it scrapping at the bottom of the barrel, but still believing every day that today might be the day that I hit a lick, that I make it happen. Um, so there were a lot of moments from my childhood that were captured the spirit of Kenny Wells. There were a lot of people that I dealt with and saw that inspired who Kenny Wells was. Some of them were romantic views of me as a 12-year-old who I thought they were. Mm -hmm. Some of them were very literal and exactly who they were. There's something very fascinating, especially on screen and in cinema, about a gold rush, you know, a treasure yeah. hunt. Well, what do you think it is about? So, you know, the character of Kenny Wells is more fascinated with the concept of gold than he is with money itself. Yeah, it's the, it's the adventure. It's the deal. It's the hustle. It's the can we make it happen? Can we make the unbelievable come true? Um, by hook or by crook, even if it's not there, can I will it to happen? The blind belief that it's there, that something's there, that is inanimate that is unseen, that is not on the surface, that no one can tell you, yeah, I've seen it. Mm -hmm. That people can go, I think it may be in that area. Um, but people do it every day now, uh, chase things. Uh, and there's still so many treasures that are on the earth and on this bottom of the ocean mainly that are unfound. Um, and people, who knows, I mean, I've got people that are prospectors of my family and have been digging and searching for minerals and. For, for decades. Most of them haven't found anything. But are they one foot away? <laughs> we never know. From the mine, from the mother load? Are they so close? How many times did you go and dig and then go, nope, this isn't the spot, let's leave. But if you'd have just gone six inches further. That hope, that's what's fun about the adventure there. And I think Hollywood is a little bit the same. It's so rare to make it in Hollywood that it's a little bit metaphoric of a, of a gold rush, you know? Uh, it's such a series of opportunities and twists of fates that make someone talented make it. Do you agree? Well, I'd say there's, there's a little more of a science to it in Hollywood because there is, there is a job to do and it has a definition. And you do need to be good at it, but you do need to be fortunate and lucky along the way as well. And I sure have had my moments of good fortune and luck that allow me to be sitting in this chair right now. But there's a little bit, uh, when you do it well, or it translates, or it's received well, or it does well in a box office, whatever, there's a bit of a science behind it. There's not a foolproof science mm. at all. Um, but that's, yeah, in a way, that's what, that's what, I know in the business of Hollywood, that's what Hollywood's trying to do. Who has the golden touch right now? Certain studios will make one, two, three, four pictures that are all successes in a row. And everyone looks to them and go, mm. what was their formula? Yeah. Well, that formula doesn't last. Yeah, next Someone else takes different. the hand, you yeah. know what I mean? As a producer, talking about that, how important is it for you that you produce stories that feel current, that feel accessible to the audience as well? Um, look, I'm... I'm I prefer ones that I feel like are timeless, that they're current, they work now, that they would have worked 30 years ago and they'll work 100 years from now, hopefully. That's the kind of stories I'm really attracted to. Um, and characters with human nature that you go, that my grandfather could understand, that my son's children's children will go, I see me in them, they, I, I know that person, I know that part of myself. Um, when that translates, that's, that's timeless, and that's what, what uh, my favorite kind of films.